Hey everyone, today at the shop I wanted to talk to you about the Kenwood DMX 958XR versus the Kenwood DMX 908S. These two models are very similar, but have a very subtle and important difference. Now on paper and in person, these two units are nearly indistinguishable. They both have shallow chassis, they both have a capacitive touchscreen, they both have four camera inputs, they both are iDataLink Maestro compatible, they both have a 13-band graphic EQ, digital time alignment, built-in crossover controls. They are both Sirius XM radio compatible. Both have HD radio. They both support three-way crossover network. They both support high-res audio. They both feature wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. And they both have a micro HDMI input. They both have a USB-C input with 3-amp charging. They both have four camera inputs. They both support wireless Android mirroring. And they're both equipped with, quote, audiophile grade components. The list goes on and on. So what is the difference between these two head units? It's really subtle. The DMX 958XR has a high resolution screen, which also enables it to work with the CMOS 740HD, which is Kenwood's high resolution HD backup camera or front camera. However, the other difference is the DMX 958XR has LDAC, which is Sony's high fidelity wireless audio processor. Now, I didn't expect to hear a difference between these two because I was under the assumption that both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, when done wirelessly, it's really the audio is being done over Wi-Fi. But I did a side-by-side -side listen. It's very subtle. And the 958XR definitely sounded better. Now, I don't know if that's because of that LDAC processor or if it's just because the 958XR is part of their reference series and perhaps they're using a little bit higher quality components in that model. But that's pretty much the major difference between these two is the higher quality backup camera or front camera compatibility on the DMX 958XR and that slightly better sound quality. Let's dive into all the details and you can see how these two units pretty much operate exactly the same other than those two minor details. The screen quality, it's, it's a noticeable difference. I don't know if most clients are gonna be willing to pay an extra $150 for that high resolution screen, but when you factor that into the better sound quality, I think that's probably gonna be worth it for a lot of people. Let's check it out. So one thing people always ask me about is startup time. So I have two iPhones connected. I don't know if having one of them recording is gonna affect this, but I'm gonna try turning the board on and off and we'll see how quickly the radios boot up and connect to CarPlay. There we go. the one on the right booted it faster and I don't have the check mark on that's annoying I might have to redo that this CarPlay is already connected on both all right let me try that again and this time I'm gonna be quick and I'm gonna actually hit that agree button all right, I'm ready to hit the agree buttons on both There we go. And, you know, I don't know why. I'm wondering if it's my board. Let me, uh, let me try turning these on and off manually. No, I'm going to it's faster. Huh. More processing, I guess, going on in the 958XR than the 908S. So if you want better sound quality, you're gonna have to wait a little bit longer. The operating system on both of these units is nearly identical. It has the classic Kenwood home screen where you can have your favorites down here. Tap that button right there and you can see all of your options and you can drag and drop the icons that you wanna use most on the home screen, just like that. And you can have a couple of different splash screens 
on your home screen. I like having the Apple Mart and the clock as displayed. You could have this screen with your compass. You could have splash screen, upload your own different image screen that you can have. So there's a couple different options you can choose from on both. Now from an audio perspective, they're both gonna give you the same type of audio controls. You're gonna have your 13 band graphic EQ with your sub-level control. You can have a couple of different presets, four to be exact. And then you're gonna have your standard Kenwood sound effects, like bass boost, loudness, drive EQ, space enhancer, Supreme Realizer Stage EQ. The one that I like to leave on is Supreme. Many of you know in my testing well, that that is the one that I like to leave on. And you can see how it doesn't really seem to have any effect on preamp level voltage. This audio memory thing, I love that. Kenwood has been doing that for years. Once you get everything dialed in the way you want it perfectly set, go in, go into audio setup memory and overwrite settings. That's gonna do is if you ever lose those audio settings for any reason, if, you know, maybe the battery in the car is extended for, you know, disconnected for an extended period of time and you somehow lose your settings, you simply go into audio memory and hit the recall button and you can recall your settings. Super convenient. I don't know why that's been such a unique thing to Kenwood. I wish all head unit manufacturers would do that. Alpine. Volume offset. I love this feature. We just had to use this the other day in a 2013 BMW X1 that had the S676 amplified audio system. And all we did was the head unit amp and sub. But because that stock system is already amplified and it's speaker level, we're amplifying an already amplified signal. This allows us to go in and actually turn down the output and all of these sources. If we didn't do that in his car, what would happen is as he's turning the volume up, it's gonna be like dramatic increases at, with each notch. And the other thing that would happen is it would really end up drowning out his 600 watt amp and subwoofer because that's only getting one signal amplification, whereas the speakers in the car were getting that double signal amplification. I love having that feature built in because it's almost like a gain control when you're putting this in a car that has a factory amplifier that is speaker level and you don't have any way to really adjust that gain. Volume offset allows you to level match between the amp that's built into the Kenwood radio and the amplifier that's built into the car. Now, if you're working in a car that's identical like Maestro compatible and the Maestro is what's retaining the amplifier, there are gonna be amp gain controls in that. So this feature is specifically for older cars where the amplifier is speaker level, not digital amplifier going through the Maestro. Super convenient to have. Other great audio features built in, crossovers. You can do a ton of damage in here if you don't know what you're doing. But uh, another example of where it's really nice to have Crossover control, if you have a car where you have very different speaker sizes in the front and the rear, they're separating that for us. So, you know, let's say you've got an older Wrangler, like a 2004, 2005, you're doing the doubled in conversion and you're sticking to the stock four by sixes in the front and the six and a halfs in the sound bar. Those front four by sixes, you're gonna wanna cross those over at a lot higher frequency than your rears, probably at 100 or 120 Hertz. The rears, you're probably gonna cross those over closer to 80. Having that kind of fine-tuned control, I love how they separate out the front rear crossovers. And that's something that Kenwood does even on their basic singled-in head units. It's something you'd expect in a touchscreen, but it's just something that Kenwood is consistent with giving you that type of control. And then also you have sub-level control as well, because in some cars, you may want to leave your crossovers flat on the amplifiers or off through, and then do your crossover control when you're sitting in the vehicle. So I like that they give you all of these options. And the, the reversing the phase, that's really convenient because sometimes, you know, you install a subwoofer in a car, depending on the positioning of the sub in the trunk, you may need to reverse the phase. And rather than, you know, hopping out of the car, going to the trunk, flipping the positive and negative on the box, you can just tap that phase inversion button right from the head unit and just actually listen. Okay, is my bass snappier, punchier, and more present this way? Or is it better this way? You just tap the button. Love that. And then Kenwood always, always gives you this kind of car cabin type customization thing. So if you don't really want to get into the finer details of setting up your crossovers or time alignment, you can just do, you know, car type, speaker size, that type of thing. And it will do those sort of generic adjustments for you for the crossover. Same thing for your digital time alignment. So time alignment, for those of you that are not familiar with it, is 
the ability to delay the speakers that are closest to you. So if you're sitting here in the driver's seat, obviously in most cars, that front left tweeter door speaker is gonna hit you before the passenger side and before the rear steer. So time alignment allows you to delay the speakers that are closer to you so that they all hit you at the same time. If you close your eyes and you have the setup correctly, you can't pinpoint where the sound is coming from. It's just sort of enveloping you. It's really, you know, for the driver. So you can't really do time correction for everybody. Um, but if you are in your car all day long and you love your stereo system and that's what keeps you going on those long drives, that is a feature I highly recommend setting up, but just follow the instructions and measure it out, set it up properly. If you are, you know, in a car where you've got a separate tweeter and a lower mid in the door, you want to measure basically the average between the two. Usually I air more towards the tweeter because that's what you're going to notice more than the mid range. So that is the, all of the audio settings. Going into the setup menu, there are actually a lot of adjustments for call quality, ringtone, speech quality, things like that, that I didn't, you know, I don't have in like my older DMX 7704S. So Kenwood's definitely made improvements over the years as far as their telephone Bluetooth call quality. This, I like this new feature. This is something you see in a lot of vehicles from the factory where it will mute the stereo when you put the car in reverse. Just kind of helps to remind you to focus for a second, pay attention to what you're doing. That is definitely something you can turn on or off though. One neat camera feature that I want to point out that is applicable to both of these models is the backup warning screen. Whenever you're in reverse, you're going to see a little banner on the top that says, watch your surroundings. It's just a legal disclaimer that you're going to find on most aftermarket head units. In the 908S and the 958XR, you can go into the camera setup and this rear camera message is default to always display. However, you can select clear after five seconds and then this way that message will actually go away. I've actually had a client with the DMX 809S uh, have an issue with his factory Toyota Highlander where the way they did the text in the 709 and, and 809S, it really takes up a good chunk of the upper portion of the screen. I'm hoping Kenwood comes up with a software update for it because it's much larger in those particular models than I've seen in other Kenwood models. And the past, like my DMX 774S has a pretty thin bar. And I believe that's the case for both of these units as well. But that is something to keep in mind. One of those little nitpicky details that I love to get after. One thing people ask me about is like the display and the keypad and dimming that kind of stuff. So this dimmer syncing with the GPS time, you can turn that on or off. And then as far as the actual dimmer, I don't know if there's actually gonna be an adjustment for the brightness. It does have this viewing angle adjustment, which I like, depending on where that's sitting in your dash. And you can upload your own background image if you wanted to. I have it set to just sync with album art, or you could pick one of these default wallpapers. And then the button color, of course, you can change that to whatever color you'd like. Yeah, you know, I don't see an actual separate slider for like the, the dimmer and the brightness. I think there is there. I think it's just maybe in another menu. Hmm, not in there, not in there, not in there. Definitely not gonna be in there. Maybe it doesn't. So this is where these units are really different. This unit is compatible with Kenwood's CMOS 740 HD, which is a higher resolution camera. Now, I feel like I really noticed the quality of that camera on a larger screen, like the DMX 1057XR. I don't think it's as impactful or noticeable on the 958XR, but you can still tell the difference between the two cameras. So this, the 958 is compatible with that CMOS 740 HD. The 908S is not. So that's one of the main differences. And that's because this is a high resolution screen. Although it may seem subtle in person, the icons are definitely more saturated and more vibrant. The other thing about both of these models with the camera assignment settings, this is super helpful. Like if you have a, you know, Honda HRV and you're replacing the radio, and let's say the car has a blind spot camera and a reverse camera. I forget what years the Maestro covers this, but I know it covers it because I've done it before. Uh, you can go into your camera assignment settings and you know when you use your turn signal the blind spot camera comes on when you are in reverse the rear camera comes on and same thing for third-party cameras you can go in and assign which camera comes on when and four inputs one of them can be used for Kenwood's dash camera 
the DVR-N520, I think is the model number. I might have that wrong. Might be DVR-520N. Park guidance lines. I like that you can turn this on or off because, you know, depending on where we can put a camera in a car, sometimes the camera has to go just to the left or just to the right of the trunk handle. So it's not dead center. And if you use the guidance lines that are actually in the camera, those are gonna be off. So with this, we can go in and we can actually adjust where these lines are sitting in the car so that if you are mounting a camera off center, you can do that and adjust your lines as needed. Now you may have noticed that both of these have a USB-C connection. And one thing I like is that Camo actually includes the little USB-C to USB adapter, depending on what setup you're doing. I like that that's included. Most head units, that's gonna be an extra part. Now this also has a micro HDMI input. The micro HDMI input would be if you wanted to mirror something from your iPhone. Now to do that, you will need one of these Apple Lightning to digital AV adapters that will accept both the HDMI and a lightning connection for charging. And to do that, I have to actually disable my connection for CarPlay in the head unit. So I'm actually just set up wired right now, but if you were set up wirelessly, you would have to disconnect your wireless connection for CarPlay because Apple won't let you do mirroring through HDMI at the same time that you're set up through wireless CarPlay. The HDMI, and then I could play something from my phone. If you wanna sit somewhere and watch something while you're you know, hanging out in your car on your lunch break or something like that, you can connect using this Apple adapter, Apple Lightning Digital AV adapter, and listen to YouTube or whatever you want. Both of these units are Sirius XM capable and also regular AM FM HD radio. Canwood still has kind of the old fashioned scrolling presets over here, not a huge fan of scrolling presets. If you tap that, you can make that go away. Tap over here, you have some more controls. If you wanted to preset a channel, basically you just press and hold, and now that channel is set to preset number one. Little tuning icon up here, manual, when I tap that, this is gonna go one by one, and that's gonna correspond also with my steering wheel controls. Auto one is gonna go to the next strongest channel, which I don't have anything hooked up in here. And then auto two would do my presets when I tap this. Same thing on your stream controls. When you have it set to auto two, it's gonna do preset search. And this emergency alerts thing, that once was on in my car, it scared the hell out of me. I didn't know what it was. If you're not used to getting those emergency alerts through your phone, like Amber alerts and things like that, you can turn that on and off right there in this little menu. And that's also how you can change how it's receiving. This will automatically switch between digital and analog when it's an auto. But if you're kind of in an area where it's on the fringe and it's just driving you nuts how it's kind of teetering back and forth, you can just turn the analog or turn it straight to analog and turn the digital off. Now I don't have an Android phone to show you this, but the wireless mirroring that is for Android devices. You go into your settings and I believe it's under smart mirror. And um, basically just like if you were gonna stream this to your television at home, you can wirelessly connect to the radio and fully mirror the phone. You can't do that and Android Auto at the same time, so it's one or the other, just kind of like with Apple, I have to turn off the wireless CarPlay in order to do the HDMI. But with Android, you can do that wirelessly. So if you wanted to you know, sit and watch something, you could select wireless mirroring. Now this does have an audio video input. I, you know, these days, I don't know what you would use that for since everything is digital nowadays. I guess if you had a, like a rear seat DVD player and you wanted to pipe in the audio and video from that rear player, rear monitor to the front, you could use that AV input. It is a 3.5, so you will need an adapter to do that. And even though it says USB on here, it doesn't have a USB. This is, it's the USB-C input. So if, I guess if you're gonna use your adapter to just a regular USB-A connection, that's what that input is. Like if you had flash memory with music stored on it, that would be the input that you would select. It basically has just that one USB-C input that you could use for either that or Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. And then really the other thing I'll just mention is the Idatalink Maestro compatibility. Kenwood was really the first to partner with Idatalink many years ago. So I feel like for many vehicles, you're getting more coverage, more features, more benefits when you go with a Kenwood radio versus like an Alpine or a Sony. You can kind of check that on iDataLink's website when you're looking up your vehicle in the product feature lookup page. 
you can kind of plug in different radios and see what features are retained and what features are not retained. But generally speaking, when you run that application, it gives you the option for, you know, choose the radios with the most features retained and Kenwood is what pops up there most of the time. Depends on the car. I will also mention that I love that the Kenwood is a true five volt preamp output. That is something that it, there is an audible difference between two volts, four volt, and five volts. The higher the voltage on that preamp, the more efficient your amplifiers can be, the lower you can have your gains. But let's say you're doing this in a car that has a factory amplified system and it's a little bit more basic and you're using the Maestro and it's going RCA in. The higher the voltage is on that head unit, the more kick you're gonna get out of that stock amplifier. And it's definitely worth it, in my opinion, to have higher voltage preamp output. And short chassis on both of these. There's you know, a couple of cars on the market where you just, shallow chassis is the only thing you can do. And an example is that Volkswagen Jetta that we just did. No way we would do a, a doubled in in that car. There just wasn't room. Even with the, you know, the short chassis, there was some modifications that need to be done. So I am a huge fan of the short chassis gives you more room to work with for wire management, but also there's just some cars where doubled in just isn't gonna cut it. So it's great to see manufacturers moving towards that shallow chassis, even on higher end models like this. All right, let's take a look at the camera differences. All right, so you can see the DMX 958XR to the left, connected to the CMOS 740HD. And then to the right, we have the DMX 908S, and that is connected to a riding CMHD4 which is one of the higher end composite backup cameras that we have on the market. The coloring, I think is more accurate on the Kenwood on the left. That's, that's more really the color of the shirt that I'm wearing. The light sensitivity might be better on the writing. I don't know, it's hard to say. I should turn the lights off and see the difference. So it is obviously still daylight out, but the lights are off in the showroom. And you can see with the lower light, the writing is getting a little bit more pixelated. The Kenwood definitely looks sharper in the low light. One of the really cool design features about this head unit is where the actual USB and micro HDMI input go in on the back of the head unit. There's this little metal cover that gets screwed down. So you have to unscrew that and then your wire goes really recessed into the head unit. And then this little metal cover gets screwed back on, basically kind of locking that cable in place so it's not going anywhere. This can make it a little bit easier to route your wires when you're actually doing the installation of the car since the cable is not part of the head unit. It's not like this long pigtail. This little cover makes it less likely that it's ever gonna just pull out or wiggle its way out on you. Both of these head units come with pretty much the same installation parts. You're gonna have a mounting sleeve and trim ring, which is gonna be helpful in some older installations where you're not gonna be able to do an ISO mount with the installation kit also comes with a GPS antenna. That's gonna help for accuracy when you are using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. You may notice it comes with a USB-C male to female. This is gonna give you 3M charging, but it also comes with this USB-C to USB-A adapter, which may be helpful depending on what type of installation you're doing, what type of cables you have in your car. It's just nice that Kenwood throws that adapter in for you. Toast, not the perfume with the weed smells Even in the way you speak Feels heavy on the danger of it I've been so drunk, can't put me on a story Three nights on stage, you would see me in a grave For you tell me you're sorry So you fly out stakes and you wanna ignore me These days she stays on the camera like she says If she don't call me Champagne on free flow When you don't get no sleep, no I've been outside all week, no Body on my mind, boy I'm falling. Used to be the kind.
Alright, now I'm going to resume listening, but now I'm connected wirelessly and I'm going to see if there's still that subtle difference or if it's more of a dramatic difference. With CarPlay, I don't think there's going to be a huge difference because the connection is done through Wi-Fi and uh, there shouldn't be any degradation in sound quality, but let's take a listen. Buy a pick up, take it down to LA. a place to call my own and try to fix up start a brand new day See, the subtle instruments that are they're kind of getting more lost in the 908s uh, they come out more in the 958 i hear more of the guitar strumming it just sounds more lively it sounds more natural with this one but it's really subtle i i i don't think most people would pick up on that but it's interesting it's fun to sit here and listen to on a snow day we're getting a nor'easter today so i'm making this video and playing around but if it was my car i would definitely go with the 958 because it to me it's an audible difference i don't i don't know if everybody's gonna hear that though now from a sound quality perspective the 958XR is part of Ken's reference series, so it's supposed to come with higher quality audio components. Technically, I didn't think I would hear a difference between both units using Apple CarPlay either wired or wirelessly, because they both support high-res audio. With Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, my understanding is when done wirelessly, the audio is being done over Wi-Fi. I didn't think there would really be a big difference, but there was a difference. Albeit subtle, it was noticeable. And the 958XR just had a little bit more richness and details in certain instruments and frequencies that I think were getting lost in the 908S. I used a couple different tracks to, to do this comparison. The favorite ones that we like to use is Old Man by Neil Young, just because of the wide range of frequencies and just the really clean recording that that is. Well, that is it for today's video. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed this content. If so, please give me that like and subscribe and I will see you guys next time.